what's going on guys welcome back to the channel my name is Northy33 and welcome to a part 2 video for my tank build on ESO now the reason why I'm ba making a part 2 video on this is because the first video I put up the other day was about my armor sets and what foods and stuff I use for my tank and what class I run um, in that video when I did create it the other day I did actually talk about the champion points my capture card cut that bit out So I'm going to go back into a part 2 video for now and talk purely about the champion points and what champion points I use for my tank um, If you guys want to see the video on my tank build from the other day then do feel free to head over to the channel And I think it was uploaded about three days ago So it's near the top of the list of ESO videos. There's also a playlist as well. You can check out so yes, we'll crack on with this so basically uh, champion points straight away what you want to do is head into the thief now there's not many in this that I do use um, I use warlord and siphoner obviously the more points you have inside it the more these effects will do but warlord reduces the cost of break free which is a massive thing for a tank to have and siphoner is when you deal a light or heavy attack you decrease the enemy's health magic and stamina recovery um, and obviously as you're tanking you're going to be doing a lot of taunts and a lot of uh, physical attacks so the less um, effects they can get put back onto them the better uh, moving on to the lover in the thief we have tenacity healthy and moon calf now healthy is increased health recovery by whatever percentage you've got in points uh, obviously this is very good for a tank to have if you're taking a lot of damage and your healer can't quite get heals to you you can actually sustain quite a long uh, length of time uh, with self heals and then obviously over time wait for the healer to get you some health at the same time but your health recovery is a major factor for a tank as well then we have tenacity and moon calf now tenacity is increased magic and stamina for a full heavy attack um, and how much it restores so if i do a heavy attack with my one hand on the shield bar then i'll restore stamina and if i use my staff i'll rec recover magicka um, much quicker but i don't really use staff too much obviously like i said i did do a second video about my build um, and you guys can go and see that. So yeah, moving on, we have Moon Calf, and this increases your stamina recovery, and that pretty much just speaks for itself because you need stamina recovery in your tank because most of the abilities you use are stamina based. Uh, moving on then to the Shadow, and I literally only have Shadow Ward, and this reduces the cost of block. And again, the more points you have in this, the better because you are a tank and you're going to be blocking a hell of a lot of the time. Um, the other one, Shade Boat, uh, Befoul, and Tumbling, you don't really need to put any points into, but you can if you want to. It depends on how your play style is. Um, moving on to the mage then we have the apprentice and I use blessed, elfborn, elemental expert and spell erosion in this bar now blessed is increased your healing done and healing done means basically your self heals and the more points you have in this the more effective your self heals are for my tank I only really use uh, resolving vigor um, from the assault bar and that is the best heal I have and obviously like I say if your heal is struggling to get some health to you you can just call that in and it restores health over time and the effect of blessed makes it more improved uh, Elfborn increases the damage and healing of your critical strikes with magical abilities uh, This would be for my choking talons and for any shields that cause any damage as well um, Moving on to elemental expert increase your flame frost and shock damage now. I am a dragon knight um, Tank so I do have a lot of flame effects and damage over time flame effects So this is very good to have as well You don't need to put too many points into it, but enough to make a difference and then spell erosion is spell penetration So that would be again the, the claws that come through the floor They'll do damage over time and they'll be increased with the spell as well. Moving on to the action orc in mage, Aaron, I use physical weapon expert and master at arms with shattering blows. Now physical we weapon expert increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks for two handed, one handed and shield dual weapons and bows. And obviously as a tank you're going to be using shield and one handed weapons a hell of a lot of the time. Um, so obviously having more damage into your heavy and light attacks is fantastic. I can get around about 2,500 from a light attack and about 4,500 from a heavy attack. Obviously the more points you put into it the more damage you'll do. Master arms increases your damage done with direct damage attacks. Again that will work for light and heavy attacks but it'll also work for taunts and slashes. Uh, and then shattering blows increases your damage done with enemies with a damage shield and obviously if you want to put a load of points into this you can because as the tank you're going to be at the forefront of most fights and you will be attacking enemies that have uh, their own damage shields up lastly moving on in the mage to the ritual now I only use uh, mighty piercing and precise strikes in this bar now precise strikes increases the damage and healing of your critical strikes with stamina abilities and again that's very good because it is a stamina build most of the time when you use the tank and the amount of critical strikes you can increase you know, it's, it's going to work out really well for you. So the more points you have in that, the better your stamina abilities with strikes are. Uh, piercing increases your physical penetration. Again, this works for light and heavy attacks and also works for taunts and one hand and weapon shields uh, abilities. Um, and then mighty increases your physical poison and disease damage. And I don't really put too much into this because I don't really feel the need to because my damage shields absorb most of that damage anyway. Uh, a few points here and there are okay, but I probably could take those points out and put them back into either precise strikes or piercing. 
Um, and then moving on to the warrior for the last bars, we have Ironclad, Spell Shield, and Resistant. Now, Ironclad reduces your damage taken against direct damage attacks. Um, so obviously, again, as you attack, you're going to be taking a lot of direct damage attacks. So the more points you have in this, the better as well. Um, spell Shield increases your spell resistance. And again, you're going to be at the front of most battles, so you're going to have a lot of spells cast on you. And obviously, the more resistant you can be to that, the, the better. Obviously, again, I've only got 10 points into this because most of my shields absorb that damage anyway. Uh, moving on to resistance, uh, increase your critical resistance by how many points you put in. And obviously critical resistance is very good as well as a tank. Um, but again, the shields will take most of that off. So you don't need to worry about too many points in this one. Um, moving on to the lady in the warrior and we have Hardy. Um, Hardy Elemental Defender is basically what I use in this one. So Hardy reduces your damage taken from physical poison and disease damage. Again, my shields will do most of that work anyway. So having a few points into that does help, but you don't really need to if you don't want to. Um, Elemental Defender reduces your damage taken from Flame Frost and Shock. Again, you don't really need to because of the shields, but this does increase the amount of resistance you can take against uh, Elemental um, attacks against you and then thick skin reduces your damage taken from damage over time effects again this would be crowd controlled on you like claws going through the floor or ice shards or something like that coming at you um, and you can be more resistant to that again the damage shields will do most of the thing for you but this bar is the most important and this is the one in warrior in the lord now this bar like I say is how your tank is going to stay alive and how much of damage you can take so starting with heavy armor focus I would advise if you don't put any points into Hardy, Thick Skinned or Elemental Defender, you spend those points and put them into Heavy Armor Focus and Bastion. But Heavy Armor Focus increases your physical resistance for each five piece of Heavy Armors you use. I do use a five piece set of Heavy Armor, so my Heavy Armor Focus is amazing. I can resist quite a lot. Obviously most of my points will go back into this now that Bastion's quite high, uh, but we'll go into that in a second. So Quick Recovery increases your healing received. So this is any heals that are chucked in by your healers or any damage shields that produce any health from your allies whilst you're in a dungeon or PvE area, uh, even a trial. Um, and yeah, healing received is really, really much needed. So if you can have loads of points in that as well, then go for it. But Bastion is where it is. So increase your effectiveness of damage shields. Now if you can have tons of points in this your damage shields are going to be through the roof on how much um damage they can take and protect you from um and i technically would if i if i could go back through i probably would go back and take off um probably elemental defender and put the 17 points straight into bastion because shields for a tank is what you rely on a hell of a lot of the time and it is what a tank build is about pretty much as long as you can resist all the attacks you're going to keep you and your mates alive whilst you're doing either trials or pve places um, yeah, like I say, that's where, it's, that's where it's at pretty much. But uh, yeah, so like I say, guys, that was my champion points. If you do want to go back through and pause at certain points in this video to, you know, have a look at the champion points or take some ideas and redist redistribute yours, then do feel free to. Um, but I sort of like want to blast through that and give you guys a heads up. Um, also, I have heard rumors that there might be a um, skills reset in champion points in the next update on November. Um, but don't hope, don't hold me to that. But just in case, make sure you write your champion points down in case your character gets a bit fucked over. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell below to make sure you get future uh, videos from me. My name is North33, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.